Okay. Good afternoon, the committees on Hawaiian Affairs and the Committee on Water and Land is into its uh, hearing notice of Friday, February 4th at one o'clock. And this is Aloha Friday day. We'd like to welcome you all. I'd like to do some housekeeping announcements. Um, <clears throat> this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants is being streamed live onto YouTube. You will find the links to viewing options for the Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page at the legislature's website and on the link posted to the hearing notice. I'd like to add that in the unlikely event that we have to end all of today's waterland hearings due to the technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. on Monday, February 7th. A public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. And for the testifiers participating remotely, uh, your audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. So please stand on your testimony if, if you don't have anything to add, but, and that was submitted to the committee in writing. Um, you also will be limited um, to two minutes. Okay, um, members committee on the waterland, we have our members, Senator <clears throat> Revere um, is here uh, live in person. Uh, we have on, on YouTube, um, Senators Misalucha, Senator Favela, and our esteemed Vice Chair, Senator Agaran. Um, Sen Chair? Yes, thank you for Hawaiian Affairs. It's myself, Senator Shimabukuro's Chair, Vice Chair Kyoho Kalole, Senators Acasio, Ihara, and Favela as well. Mahalo. Okay, thank you, members. We'll proceed with SB 2759, and this is relating to the disposition of water rights. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh, yes, sorry. Okay. Sorry, folks. I was way ahead of my agenda. So the Committees on Water and Land and the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs, the agenda for SB 872, and this is relating to the Commission on Water Resource Management. And this, this adds the chairperson of the Hawaiian Homes Commission or the chairperson's designee to serve as an ex officio voting member on the Commission of Water Resource Management. Uh, we do have first up Seaworm, uh, the Committee, the Commission on Water Resources Management for a DLNR uh, Kaleo Manual. Hello, chairs, vice chairs, and committee members. Kaleo Manuel, deputy with the Water Commission. Uh, we stand on our written testimony offering comments on this measure. We're here to answer any questions if you have any. Mahalo. Thank you, Chair, for being available. Neil Fuji, stand on your testimony. Oh, yes, uh, stand on it this way. Thank you. Okay, Mahalo. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Chair Isla. Welcome, testifying for DHHL. Good morning, Chair and I, uh, Chair Shimabukuro, members of the committees. Uh, we stand uh, in support of this bill and stand ready to answer any questions. Okay, mahalo. Uh, we do have an individual, Johnny Me or Johnny Ma'i. I believe not present, Chair. Okay, uh, sense communication in support. Uh, we do have uh, Homilani uh, Shadow. Aloha, Chairs Inouye and Shima Bukuro, Vice Chairs Keith Aragon and Kyoho Kaloli, and members of both committees. Aloha. Um, I just want to make a point on in my testimony that this is the fourth year form of this bill has been introduced for legislation. The Commission on Water Resource Management motto is Ke Kahuvai Pono which translates to the trustee who oversees the rightful sharing of water. I take nothing away from current members on the commission. They all have impressive resumes. However, DHHL manages and operates four water systems in its exclusive control. These water service areas are located in Anaholakua'i, Ho'olehua and Kalama'ula Molokai, 
Kawai Hai and Pu'ukapu Hawaii. Is this not enough to qualify as a trustee? What are the qualifications to be a commission on water resource management commissioner? Why is there resistance to making space for DHHL at the commission table? A seat and a vote on the Commission on Water Resource Management for the chairperson of the Hawaiian Homes Commission will provide oversight for compliance with Section 221B of the Hawaiian Homes Commission's Act and therefore avoid the comments on the case notes under Section 220, where the Commission failed its duty to protect the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. I strongly urge passage of this bill and ask for your support and commitment to assist DHHL in advancing its mission and service to our beneficiaries. Mahalo for your time and space for me to present my testimony. Mahalo. 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 Uh, we have uh, several in support. Pi'ilani Pa'opu'iki, uh, she's with the League of Women Voters in support. We do have the Democratic Party Environmental Caucus in support. Uh, we have support from Barbara Berry and Edward Ayal. We have an opposition from Charles Ice. Um, <clears throat> members, any questions? The Committee on Water and Land. Yes, Senator Revere. Thank you for um, Water Commission for Kalo. Kaleo Manuel, DHHL, Seaworm. Hi. My question is um, with eight voting members, is there a potential you could come to um, a, a, you know, a tie four to four and things would get stalled? What is the potential repercussions of having an even number of voting members, is, if there is any? Yeah, mahalo for that question, Senator. I think um, there is that potential for a tie. Uh, I think if there is ever a tie, um, the <clears throat> measure is basically not passed. Um, and it's just, I think, normal board procedures. And I can be corrected if I'm wrong. Um, so that would make uh, operation potentially challenging. Um, but I think the commission has operated with and historically in its numbers. We did at one time have an even number of board members. It's always good practice, I think, to have an odd number. Um, so if that is an issue, you know, another alternative could be to add another member so that we would have nine instead of seven. And I think the um, review commission and others have talked about adding more seats to this commission. Historically, we just haven't done so at this time. We have had a seven member board for uh, quite some time at this moment. If it, if it were four to four, could you just punt it up to the board of land and natural resources for decision or what? I mean, or would something just be stuck? Uh, I think it would be stuck and the, the motion wouldn't move. Um, okay. Yeah, so it would require the commission to review or revisit its recommendations. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, I just wanted to see what would happen. Thank you, <coughs> thanks, Jim. Okay, any further questions for the Committee on Water and Land? Yeah, I have, an, I have a question. Yes, Senator Adoran. This is for Kaleo. Let me see on. Yeah, proceed. So uh, of the current seven members, you have what the Department of Health Director and the uh, Chair of the Land Board as ex-official members. This would be a third one. Um, what's been the attendance of the ex-official members at the, board, at the board, at the commission meeting? Uh, I can only speak to my tenure here. Uh, the Water Commission, but the ex official Department of Health designee, um, as well as a chair, chair is always there. So the attendance has been close, if not 100%. Um, so we haven't had any issues with the forum um, related to those ex official members. Because that's always a concern when you increase the number of people on, on the commission, because you do change the quorum. Um, with an eight member board, quorum becomes five instead of four, is that right? I, I, I would have to go look and consult with the AG on what would be considered quorum. Well, you can't really operate with just half the commission. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to. So I think five would be quorum versus four. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Sorry, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Committee on Hawaiian Affairs, questions? Yeah, question. Yes, Senator uh, Inhara. Question to the Water Commission. I'll see worm. Okay. Over Hello. in the last few years, and how many of the issues that the Commission has decided on have involved Hawaiian homelands, and how many have not? I can't answer the exact amount, Senator, um, uh, but one of the obligations for the commission under 174 C 101 requires that us for the, com the commission to consider DHHL's needs in its decision making process. So to that end, um, it's part of our evaluation and recommendations that we make before the board. So I mean, we would evaluate their needs uh, when we bring submittals to the commission. Not all of the time they directly involve DHHL, um, but it does call for that evaluation within the code. So could I maybe through the chair request to, uh, I'm trying to get the number of roughly of uh, decisions made that do not involve white homelands for which they will have a vote. Okay, sure, we can make that request if, if possible for Deal and R to respond. Do, do we have any guess? Is it 50 50, you know, with a certain percentage, any off or a small percentage, large percentage? I, I would, uh, let me, I, I have to get back to you on that. Um, a, a lot of the decisions that come forward may have implications on DHHL's rights within the context of the water code. Um, and we, again, try to evaluate those in our recommendations to the commission, uh, but not all of them are directly actions related to DHHL specifically. They may involve other parties that have an effect on DHHL. So in that context, it would count, we count those as sure. potentially coming up. So I, I'd have to go through the, the submittals to determine. Sure. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? I have one, um, so Kaleo, all of the, uh, the question would be related to DHHL awarded uh, lots or a subdivision. Do they have to go to Seaworm for all of their development plans before uh, execution of a development to occur? Well, Senator, for that question, um, I, I will defer to DHHL, um, but the permits as a regulatory agency, the commission um, manages any wells and the pumps related to that. We permit that any stream diversion or stream channel alteration permits. And in water management areas, we issue water use permits to the extent that those um, subdivisions or developments require any one of those permits, they would come to the commission. Um, that I think, you know, in the context of DHHL's development, we're one of many of the things that they require right. okay. to move forward through subdivision. Okay, and there has been no problems, right? I don't remember any uh, uh, objections to any of their developments in the history of um, of development lots for uh, DHH lands. Um, I would have to go and check, but I mean, I'm just thinking, Senator. You know, the issuing water use permits are areas that are contestable, and there has mm -hmm. been contested case hearings. Some of our biggest hearings, for example, oh, okay. Ukuya Molokai which was tied to a request to increase the water use permit allocation for lots on Molokai. So in that case, it has that potential. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it doesn't have an effect. I think we it's a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, with regards to Senator Ihara's question, um, Chair Shimabakura as well. Um, Kaleo, can you get back to the committees? And I'd like to um, have that uh, continue on. Uh, we'll move out on um, this particular measure, and as the as it moves to judiciary, then uh, that will also be available to them and the copies to both um, Senator Shima, the, what, uh, the Hawaiian Affairs and the Waterland Committee. Then we'll right. distribute that uh, exactly uh, the same report that goes to judiciary. Uh, we'll circulate it within our members as well. Thank you very Can much. Can I have another question? Yes, Senator Ihara. Is there a recusal issue if one homeland uh, has a, per, uh, uh, a submittal 
would the chair have to recuse himself or could he vote on that? That's a great question, Senator Ihara. Um, I know that in a prior testimony from the commission, there was that potential raised. Um, in my research with the ethics, because it would be an ethics violation, um, last session related to this bill, I was advised that there is no conflict um, and that that to the chair wouldn't have to recuse, but that may be something to direct to the ethics commission um, specifically. So you can get that in writing, but that was in my consultation when we drafted our comments this session and last session, we removed that from our comments because um, they said that wouldn't be a conflict. So could the chair vote no on an application from on Homelands? I'm, the chair could. I mean, it, it would be a voting member of that commission. Okay. So then he'll have to take it up with his commission, his, with his or her own commission. Uh, Hawaiian Homeland's commission as to whether that's a breach of his fiduciary responsibility to, the, to that commission. That could be potentially an issue. Judiciary can have that kind of thing. Okay, um, here's a suggestion I'd like to offer. Senator Shimabukuro and I, um, Senator uh, Chair, if you agree, why don't you and I send a letter to the Ethics Commission uh, af uh, immediately after this hearing so that um, we can get some clarification and the response that goes to judiciary, okay. if you don't mind. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions, members? Okay. Um, hearing none, then um, uh, Chair Shimabukur, shall we go into the breakout room? Either way, if you're, if you're rushed for time, we can also just, you know, make the decision here if that's easier. Okay. I think, um, yeah, we have conferred uh, between the chair and I as well. So, uh, members, uh, with regards to SB 872, the uh, both chairs recommend that we pass uh, with the amendments. What we're going to be doing is defecting the date to July 2050. And if there's, I adopt any technical and non substantive amendments to this measure. Any questions? Okay, hearing none for the Committee on Water and Land. Senator Revere, will you take the vote on SB 872 to pass with amendments? Okay, committee, we're voting as uh, recommended by the chair. Chair votes. Chair aye. votes aye. Vice Chair Agron? Aye. Uh, Senator Misa Lucha? Aye. I vote aye. Senator Favela? Senator Favela. Reservations. Reservations. Chair, your recommendations adopted. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Hawaiian Affairs same recommendation. Um, Senator Ihara, are you able to take the vote? Yes. Oh, thank you. We're voting on the, the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 872 with amendments. Chair Shimabukuro? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair is excused. Senator Acasio? Aye. Senator Ihara votes aye. Senator Favela? Reservations. The recommendation is adopted. Mahalo. Okay. All right, members, we will be having a triple joint and we will uh, await the uh, incoming committee of the Committee on Agriculture and Environment. IT, do we see the Committee on Agriculture? I see Senator Debert there. Yes, Chair. Okay. Okay, just to confirm, Senator Shimabukura, are you ready? to join the triple? All right. Sorry, ready. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Um, the committees on the Committee on Water and Land, the Committee on Agriculture and the Environment, and the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs is proceeding to hear SB 2759. And this is relating to the disposition of water rights. This exempts the in-stream use of water for traditional and customary kalo cultivation practices from the existing process for distribution of water rights. Okay, first up on testifying on this measure, um, 
chair case or let's see do we have deputy yep. director uh oh. either oh, who's representing oh, Ian, who's representing Ian, dlnr uh ian hero Cowell from DLNR. okay yeah. all right proceed okay. yeah oh, good afternoon chairs members of the committee ian hero call with dlnr land division uh, we'll stand on our testimony supporting the intent of the major and offering comments and be available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kevin Moore, DLNR, Land Division. Okay, sends communication um, with comments. Uh, <clears throat> Chair Isla, DHHL. Uh, good afternoon, Chairs Inouye and Gabbard, Shimabuku, and members of the committee. The department strongly supports this bill, and it is in alignment with the uh, Hawaiian Home Commission's um, actions uh, with regards to promoting the use of water for traditional and customary practices, which does not directly uh, or adversely harm the DHHL and its beneficiaries. Thank you. Okay, mahalo. <clears throat> Uh, testifying for the Council District 8, North Kuna, Hawaii County Council, uh, Dr. Holeko Inaba. Hello, Aloha. Kako, um, Holeko Inaba here, North Kona, mm -hmm. District 8 on the Hawaii County Council, here to testify in support of this measure. Uh, I was able to testify earlier in the House hearing and just want to point out that as we continue to um, seek development and growth in our agriculture sector. Um, we need to first and, formal, uh, first and foremost be able to support our Hawaiian farmers and our Kalo farmers who um, have been doing this for generations. So we ask for your support um, on this measure. Mahalo Nui for this opportunity to testify. Okay, mahalo and good to see you. Vaioli uh, Valley Taro Hui. Next. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo chairs, vice chairs, and honorable committee members. I'm Kupua Sprout, and I'm testifying today on behalf of the Waioli Valley Tarahui. I'm a professor at UH Manoa's Richardson School of Law and the director of Kahuliao, our Native Hawaiian Law Center. I co-teach our Native Hawaiian and Environmental Law Clinics, and which are classes that are offered to upper division students, and we provide free legal assistance to communities with the greatest needs. Since 2019, we have been working with the Waioli Valley Tarahui on Kauai and their situation is detailed in the Hui's written testimony, as well as the testimonies of the 11 individual farmers upon which we stand. The bottom line is that the Hui is a collection of a handful of farmers, most of whom are Native Hawaiian with long-standing ties to this area. Most are third to fifth generation Kalo farmers, and some were born on the land that they now tend. Their lifeways were devastated by the major flooding in 2018, and it's been a continual recovery effort since that time. Over the last three years, the farmers, with the assistance of our clinics, have been working diligently to comply with 171's many complex requirements, including a right of entry, an easement, an IIFS amendment, and even an FEA and a FONSI. In fact, over those many years, 33 students and four attorneys have spent more than 2,000 hours supporting these farmers in trying to get a water lease under HRS 171. The, the students, I mean, I'm sorry, the farmers' use and stewardship of this area is ancient. Research has documented their lo'i kala to the 15th century, and the same awai and lo'i have been in the cultivation in the same ways for at least the last 150 years. So the system has been in place before Hawaii was a state, before there was a conservation zone, before there was a 171. And their water use is also pono. It's in-stream, in-watershed, non-polluting, and they are public trust purposes. So the farmers have a pertinent riparian and traditional and customary Native Hawaiian rights. Despite all of the justice issues here, these farmers have dutifully sought to comply with the full letter of the law. And I am here today to ask you to please pass this bill. We have worked closely with Ian Hirakawa and others at DLNR and even they recognize how difficult this process has been and the need for amendments. Last year, a concurrent resolution passed out and we thought that that would be the end of it, but it is not. And so I just wanna clarify that although the farmers did not ask for this bill, they welcome it. And I wanna mahalo in particular, Senators Inoue, Ocasio, Lisa Lucia, Gabbard, and Keith Agaran for introducing the measure. I'm happy to delve into the details or answer any questions that you may have. Mahalo. Mahalo kapua. Uh, next up, Hui Ona Bai Eha. 
Okay, is Pokual Pellegrino there to speak on behalf of the... Yes, aloha mai kako and my apologies, I'm trying to start with, there we go. Oh, okay, aloha. Aloha mai kako, Senators, uh, Chair, and uh, members of this committee. My name is Hokuau Pellegrino, I'm the President of Puyo Nova'i'eha on the island of Maui. Um, I'm also a Kulela Kalo farmer in the Ahupua of Waikapu, and our organization represents uh, a multitude of uh, lineal descendants of Native Hawaiian Kalo farmers, community members, uh, water resource advocates, and have, um, first and foremost, thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony. And we'd like to um, express our gratitude to Senator Inouye for coming to Maui and uh, listening to our community and seeing firsthand some of the challenges that we're facing. But first and foremost, we, we absolutely want to support the white only Kalo farmers and producers, being that they have um, our, our probably our largest Kalo farming uh, region in Hawaii. The efforts that they put forth um, for the greater Paiaina of Hawaii is, is integral and their continued support um, to ensure that they can continue to farm uh, for many more generations is critical and Huyo Nova'iha strongly supports this bill. In addition to uh, the amendments that uh, we were asked to provide uh, to also support uh, Kuleana Kalo farming use and access for Kuleana water, um, which we provided in our written testimony, which we stand strongly on um, to support the um, amendments to this particular bill. Again, mahalo for your time, mahalo for your efforts, and especially Senator Inouye for coming to Maui and, so, and the rest of the senators for supporting this bill. Mahalo. Aloha. Okay. Mahalo, good to see you. Um, also, we have Haiku Community Association, Lucien de Na, Na, Na Ai. Mahalo. Uh, I am Lucien de Nei. <laughs> it's not a Hawaiian name, it's a French name. And I'm the president of the Haiku Community Association. We also strongly support this bill. It is time that we have uh, a process that, that really fits um, the level of use that our Kalo farmers and the level of rights that our Kalo farmers possess uh, all over the state. And of course, we stand in solidarity with everything Nava'i ha, ha folks have said about the need for a few more amendments because we have Kalo farmers in our region, in Haiku, in Hoelo, in Honoko, who uh, are finding it hard to get access to the water uh, in our restored streams or our unrestored streams, uh, even though they have Kuleana rights. They have clear Kuleana rights. So this really needs to be made clear. This would be a wonderful opportunity to do this. Uh, this is a problem that um, is, is hurting little people that are trying to do their best to add to our food supply and also uh, to feed their families and, and extended families and community nutritious food, which I think we all support. So we really, um, mahalo, uh, every one of you on the, on the uh, committee and certainly uh, the chairs and vice chairs and others who have uh, proposed this um, needed change. And we hope you will consider strongly the amendments that Huyo Nava'iha has submitted, which will just further clarify and extend this to Kalo farmers who are non-leaseholders, uh, but who still uh, don't have a, a clear pathway to getting access to water that they're legally entitled to. Mahalo. Okay. Okay. Mahalo for your testimony, Lucian. Uh, testifying for Earth Justice, Isaac Moriwaki. Aloha, Chair, Aloha. Vice Chairs, members of the committee, Isaac Moriwake, Managing Attorney with Earth Justice. We stand in our, uh, on our testimony, strong support of this measure, as well as the amendments proposed by Huyen Ovaiha, consultation with Chair Inouye. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo as well. Uh, Joanne Kaona. Aloha, Aloha Joanne. Aloha, Senators. Uh, my name is Joanne Kaona. Mahalo for this opportunity to testify. I'm here to humbly ask that you support SB 2759. Um, we want to thank Senator, Senator Inouye and all the other senators that helped to recognize how difficult this process has been and for introducing this bill to hopefully provide some relief for us and others like us. Um, I hailed my dad, Clarence Shorty Kaona, 
farm hollow in Wyoli Valley. My dad's 86 and he still goes to the Loi every single day. Um, I'm the secretary of the Wyoli Valley Tarot Hui and I also work at the Waipa Foundation where I get to grow food and teach kids about aloha aina, sustainability, natural resource management, and traditional and customary Native Hawaiian practices. At Waipa, we make poi every Thursday with volunteers which gets distributed across the island and a majority of that kalo used to make the poi is grown by small family farms within Wyoli, including my dad and I. For us, farming kalo defines our ohana. It's how we contribute to our community. Um, as a fourth generation farmer, it would be impossible for me to turn away from a practice that had been part of my family for so long. But honestly, the last four years have been rough for us. Um, uh, after the damages of the 2018 flood, and then trying to navigate the complex legal process of 171, learning about revocable permits, water leases, IIFSs, EAs, Fonzies, and all these other acronyms that I never knew existed, it's a bit overwhelming to come to the realization that a modern day tarot farmer also has to be a part-time lawyer. <laughs> Um, our hui started this process of getting a water lease in good faith and have done all the necessary compliance work, which we couldn't have accomplished without the hours and hours of work from Kapua, Ui, and each and every clinician. Um, okay, and Joanne, we, yes. you, can you just summarize quickly? Your time is up. Yes, yes, yes. We had so much support and like so much support from everyone but the bottom line is we still don't have a water lease so that's why this bill is so important to us and um just please support it mahalo mahalo chris kobayashi aloha aloha, aloha. My, name, aloha. my name is chris kobayashi and i farm kalo in waioli with my partner demi um, I live and work on the same farm where I was born and raised, and this is the same place that my dad and grandfather lived and farmed from over 100 years ago. Mm. So, um, like Joanne said, we have learned that in order to be a farmer today, you also need to be a lawyer and have many other skills because it takes enormous amounts of time away from farming and growing food. So just a really quick example is like if you're a farmer and you have a weed in your, in your field, your tar patch, and you, you want to go pick it, but you don't have time because you have all these other things you have to do. And then you look away and then before you know it, it's overgrown and you can't, it might even be over the tarot and you can't even save it. So you might have to plow it under. And I feel like it's like a desk that's full of paperwork that's just piling up on anyone's desk with so many deadlines and it's really, really overwhelming. So we are like so super um, grateful that Kapua Sprout and um, Uilani Tanigao and the team of lawyers at the UH and the clinicians have helped us navigate through all this long and lengthy cumbersome process for the last three years and now going on four. And I know that their clinic is now done, but they're still, Kapua and uh, Ui still come out and help us. So right now we're asking you senators to help us and help us to vote today to provide Kalo farmers with an exemption from chapter 171. I don't want to see this water system or culture of growing kala be abandoned now or in the future just because farmers have no funds, no expertise, no time for all the legal stuff. I feel like a lot of our farmers that are here in Waioli, we're deeply rooted here. Um, we're part of this kala growing lineage that has been going on in Waioli for hundreds of years and we want to carry on this, this tradition. This, Kuleana, you know, and keep this traditional culture to continue for generations to come. So mahalo nui and also mahalo to uh, Senator Inoue for understanding, recognizing what a struggle it is that we have gone through. I, I hope that other farmers like us, uh, traditional Kalo farmers, don't have to go through this process. All right. just mahalo, Chris. Thank you. Mahalo. Uilani Tanigawa Aloha my kako, chairs, Aloha. Vice, Aloha, vice chairs and committee members. My name is Uilani Taniga alum and I'm an attorney and a fellow at Kahuliao Center for Excellence in Native Fine Law, where I get to um, teach many of the clinics that we've been talking about today. Mahalo nui for this opportunity to testify in strong support. I stand on my written testimony, but I'd like to briefly highlight here that I agree that this measure takes steps 
to bring the black letter law to life on the ground and in our communities. It would provide much needed justice for Kalo farmers like the Waioli Valley Terra Hui. I first met the Hui as a law student with Professor Kukwo in 2019. And since then, my career as, as a young attorney has been shaped and inspired by their hard work, aloha, and unfortunately, navigating the 17158 process. And while I'm grateful to know these folks, these incredible folks, they shouldn't need a lawyer to be a farmer. And I have seen firsthand and the Hui's 2021 final EA confirms that the in-stream use of water for traditional and customary kalo cultivation like the Hui's offers significant be environmental benefits. The analysis supports the idea that kalo farmers like the farmers here in Waioli actually improve the environment and provide crucial stewardship of Aina and its resources. That said, I'd like to thank you for your time and thank you for your service for our collective Hawaii and respectfully ask that you vote today to pass this bill. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo for taking time as well. Thank you and Kapua for doing all you have done in the years to, in the years past um, for, for our Kanaka Maoli and the tarot growers. Members, we have many, many support um, and I'll just uh, read their names and these are all in support. Jody Saekusa from the Planning Department of Hawaii, the County of Hawaii, Michael Dahili, the Waimea Hawaiian Civic Club, Edith Hawaii, the Kuaina Ulu Au Amo, Kevin Chang, Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, and Frederick, Hawaii C, Jerry DiPietro. We do have the Waipa, Waipa Foundation, uh, Stacy Sproat Beck. Uh, and also from the Kupuna for the Mo'o Opuna individuals, Barbara Barry, Charlie Ice, Kaulu, Lu'u Vai, Chris Nonokawa, uh, MJ Palau McDonald, Haunani Lam, Hoku Chan, Nicholas Harders, Christian Cook, Alexa DK, uh, Jordan Ludon, Conrad Inanod, Shorty Kaona, Bobby Watari, Lillian Watari, Kaisen Carrillo, Dimitri Riva, uh, Rivera, Dwight Morishige, Wen, Wayne Tanji, Sierra Lynn Stone, Ashley Kaono, uh, <clears throat> Kuhio Lewis, of course, from the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement and the Hawaii Land Trust, Laura Kaakua. Uh, we also have support from uh, Maya Safri, uh, Penny Levine and Jessica Fu. Um, <clears throat> members, these are the support letters. Any questions for any of the uh, testifiers for the Committee on the Water and Land? Any questions? Okay. Uh, Senator Gabbard, your members? There's any questions? Yes, I, I, I see Senator Alcasio there. Okay, proceed, Laura. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, if uh, Kapoor Spro is here, yeah. if not Uilani, yeah. or perhaps I think Kapoor is still after, here. I just had a question in relationship to um, the LNR. Oh. I'm here. Sorry for the delay. My video had a bit of lag starting, but I'm here. Uh, can you hear oh. Senator Acasio's question? I'm sorry. Could you please repeat that, Senator Acasio? No problem. Relationship to DLNR made a, a comment to extend this to commercial kalo farmers, not just subsistence. And in your testimony, as well as others, I just hear a lot about, of course, the the, um, the importance of um, culture and traditional practices. And then also, you did mention, you know, you know, uh, pollution and how this is in stream and it it doesn't, you know, detract from that. Um, that in-stream process, and 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 I just recognize that um, commercial power farming can have uh, a different approach to it. And I just wanted to see if you had any comments as to that um, inclusion. Yeah, I do. Thank you so much for asking, Senator Ocasio. I think that this um, issue that's been highlighted by DLNR kind of is emblematic of why it's taken four years for the, and the farmers still don't have a lease. So these farmers, um, and there are only about a dozen of them. Our small family farmers, I, I think, are the most Pono folks that I have seen in, in so long. I mean, they, they really malama this place. They are fourth to sixth generation Kalo farmers. And so the Aina is really part of their Ohana. 
And so to me, the language that's been set forth in the bill in subsection H is more than sufficient. I don't think it's vague or ambiguous, and I think it is clear, but Ian and the folks at the LNR have expressed a reservation that there is some commercial elements to some work that um, some of the Kala farmers do, not everyone, but some. And, I, and that's frankly been part of the delay and why we still don't have um, a water lease, even though the concurrent resolution passed last year, because my understanding is that there are some folks in the department that are concerned about that. And what I would say is that for these Kala farmers that Kala cultivation is a way of life, it's a kuleana. Nobody's doing this to make big bucks. They could be making way more money doing other things, but this is part of their cultural tradition that, that um, they carry on. And what we need to recognize is that in 2021, being a practitioner means that you might have to sell some aspect of your crop so you can either pay for gas for your weed eater or pay for your land taxes, because as awesome as these folks are, they can't take their kala down to um, the county and say and pay their land taxes and that and so I think we need to recognize here that there's also an evolution in Hawaiian cultural practices that this isn't this isn't something that is stuck in a specific date and time that you know that we as people evolve with our practices and it needs to recognize that and so to answer more directly I think the language of the statute is fine I, I mean the proposed amendment is fine I don't think that we need Ian's amendment, but to the degree that they want it. And I think that if there's a concern about that, to the degree that your committee can address that in the committee report, um, that these white oli farmers are, are covered, I think that would be more than fine. Mahalo. Okay. Any further questions, members? Uh, if yes. has, can I follow uh, up with that? Can yes, Senator Agaran. I, I'm not sure. Is that the question, uh, Senator Abaran? Is that for Kapua? Yeah, it would be for Kapua. Okay. I'm not sure just a committee report is going to resolve this. If if there is going to be a commercial aspect and that, that gets raised, so it's probably the bill which they need to be amended along the lines of what DLNR is suggesting. But my, my, my question for you, though, is there's also a request from some of the people from my area to actually use this as a vehicle to amend the water code. Um, no, it's in the old days, I probably wouldn't have had a problem with that procedure, but with the Hawaii Supreme Court decision that came up, is that going to be, are we going to run a follow of, of the germaneness if we make that amendment in this vehicle? Because this vehicle is dealing with a change to how we dispose of water leases in Chapter 171. And I don't want to derail this bill by making that amendment, you know, despite the fact that that's probably a good idea. Um, thank you, Senator Agaron. I guess two, two I see your, your question as having two parts. And so with respect to the first, if you wanted to add language, if there was a concern and you wanted to add language, for example, to say, to the to the end of what's now section H to say something like as well as commercial crop cultivation conducted in a traditional manner that might address um, Ian and DLNR's concern and we wouldn't have an issue with that. I don't think it's necessary, but in abundance of caution, um, I would be happy to welcome that. With respect to your second question and whether or not um, the proposed amendments would run afoul of of the Supreme Court, um, the recent Supreme Court case. I haven't seen the amendments that have been proposed, and so I can't say specifically. I hear your concern, um, and I do think that, especially in light of the recent cases, that we need to be careful and we need to look um, at the degree to which you know the report title and the description fits the proposed amendments. And I believe that Isaac Marwaki is also on the call, and um, he may have a more specific response to that. Sure, if he's Senator, there and then Senator Agaran, would you want to? Would uh, Senator Agaran, are you saying that you would want to hear from a uh, Moriwaki then? From Isaac? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to impose on your time, though, Chair. So no, I'm that's no problem, her, so. Isaac. Why don't you respond if you're available? I'm here. Thank you. Um, so I think most directly, maybe this is a legal question to be posed to the Senate's attorneys or the legislature's attorneys. But you know, everyone knows about that decision. Uh, and I asked this question when we were consulting with uh, Cherry Noe about how we approach this uh, much needed and long overdue amendment addressing sort of the Kuleana access rights issue. Uh, and you know, the test is, as uh, Senator Agaron 
mention uh, germaneness. And um, I, I don't want to, again, preempt sort of the, the legislative attorney's function, but uh, we believe that um, this issue of water rights is um, you know, certainly encompasses both Kahlo farmers' right to be able to continue to practice free from these burdensome and onerous permit requirements, as well as their you know, right of um, access to uh, the water source or the, the awai uh, itself. And you know, it falls in the, under that general umbrella. But again, you know, I'm not the specific expert on that. Going further, Senator, any more? No, no, that, that's fine. Okay. All right. Any further questions from the committee? Uh, you want to? I have to. Yes. Senator Ihara. I had a question for DLNR. Uh, Who is there? See. Either Chair Case or Ian, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here, Senator. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Is it the department's position that the current language does not exempt um, all uh, under under the administration bill that says basically water licenses for taro cultivation done in a traditional manner shall be exempt from the public auction requirement is the that's the administration's bill uh, the question is is it the department's position that this current language in that we're hearing now senate bill 2759 uh, does not exempt some um, cultivation done in traditional manner, particularly commercial? Well, I think because the um, language in the present bill, I mean, we do have that concern because the language in the present bill, you know, is basically tradition and customary practices, and there is legal precedent that excludes commercial use. And I think how, how the department's position is, is that you know, we find that we want to, like, much like Kapoor, I think we're on the same page, is we want to, if any relief is to be given from the process, it should be for the practice. And if somebody sells some of their crop, you know, to, to help with that, or does that for a living, you know, that we want to include those folks as well. So we just don't want there to be any kind of ambiguity there. You know, we want to make sure that it is a broad application, provided the, the method of cultivation you know, is, is a traditional method, even if it is commercial. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions uh, with regards to SB 2759 members? Senator Shib Shimabukuro, did you have your hand up? No, no, I can talk okay. about um, decision making. Thank you. All right, all right. If uh, hearing no further questions, um, members, uh, should, Senator Gabbard and Senator Shimabukuro, um, shall we go into the break room? I, yes, I'm ready for that. Yes, okay. All, All right. right. I, IT, uh, the break room, please. Okay. Opening up the break room, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, the triple uh, committees of water and land, the agriculture and, and one second, the agriculture and environment committee and the committee on Hawaiian affairs is going into decision making on SB 2759. And members of both of, not both, three of the chairs uh, of the said committees recommend that we pass SB 2759 with the amendments is to uh, defect the date to July 1st, 2050 and to adopt Hui O Navai Eha's amendments. Any discussion? Hearing none, then for the Committee on Water and Land, um, Senator v uh, Revere, for the votes, please, Chair votes aye. Thank you. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Kidagran. Aye. <clears throat> aye. Thank you. Senator Misalucha. Aye. I vote aye. Senator Favela. 
Senator Favela, your vote. Aye. Aye. Adopted. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Committee on Agriculture. Same recommendation for AEN. Uh, chair votes aye. Uh, Senator, I'll take the vote. Uh, Senator Nishiara, vice chair, is excused. Uh, Senator Favela. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Mahalo, members. Committee on Hawaiian Affairs. Thank you for Hawaiian Affairs. Same recommendation. If Senator Harp could take the vote, please. Hawaiian Affairs Committee is voting on the recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2759 with amendments. Chair Shimabukuro. Aye. Vice Chair is excused. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Haru votes aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. And this concludes the triple hearing on SB 2759. We'll gavel out and the Committee on Waterland will you remain, please. AAN members, please join me in uh, back at our hearing. Thank you. Okay. The Committee on Water and Land uh, is going to go into decision making on its measure that was deferred uh, today's date, Friday, February 4th. And this is on SB 2068. And this is relating to the land management uh, and members. This is the deferred item as we know that Act, 9, Act 90 measure. You have been um, issued uh, from our office the SD1, um, and we need to make a decision today. The Committee on Agriculture will be making decisions on Monday. The recommendation from both chairs um, of the committee uh, with regards to SB2068 uh, is as followed, and I want to thank our staff uh, for doing such a good job. We worked hard this weekend um, to look at this measure as well as our communication with those that sent testimonies as well, uh, as well as um, questions um, and assistance from the uh, Farm Bureau. And I, um, we agree that um, the discussions has been very helpful. So we'd like to recommend that um, that we uh, pass this um, with amendments and we are going to adopt the technical and non substantive amendments as well. And we're going to adopt what the proposed SD1 uh, amendments um, that recommended. Uh, your committees um, recommend that, and I will go on to include all of the changes. Um, first off, we're going to amend section one to reflect its amended purpose. Uh, secondly, clarifying lands classified for agriculture use to include all intensive agriculture use, special livestock use, and pasture use lands. And thirdly, we're including pasture use as a type of land leased by the Department of Land and Natural Resources to be transferred to and managed by the Department of Agriculture. Fourthly, we're clarifying the transfer of and management of encumbered non-agriculture parkland subject to the suitability of the land for agricultural activities and use as determined and approved by the Board of Agriculture, provided that designated conservation lands not in current agriculture use shall remain under the jurisdiction of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And fifth, retaining the Board of Agriculture's authority to determine the manner of transferring non-agriculture parklands. Six, we're deleting section five of the measure, therefore thereby retaining the existing statutory provision 
that requires the Board of Agriculture to adopt rules pursuant to Chapter 91, including its eligibility requirements for each disposition and applicant qualifications to effectuate the purposes of Chapter 166E. Seven, and on the seventh change, we're deleting Section 6 of this measure to reflect the deletion of subsequent sections regarding amendments to statutory language on restrictions and negotiations for pasture leases. Eight, we're deleting Section 7 of this measure, thereby retaining existing statutory language on lease restrictions generally. Ninth, deleting Section 8 of this measure, thereby retaining existing statutory language on disposition of public land leases by negotiation. Tenth, we're amending Section 9 to reflect the purpose of Part 3. Eleven, we're amending Section 10 to require the Department of Land and Natural Resources to seek approval from the Board of Land and Natural Resources and the Board of Agriculture prior to the removal of any land designated for pasture leases for reforestation or other public purposes. And 12, we're amending Section 10 to include adequate notice of no less than one year to the then current lessee or permittee if withdrawal is approved by both boards. 13th, amending Section 10 to include the term realistic for the Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Forestry and Wildlife's funding, funded action plan for reforestation purposes. And 14 last, making technical and non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency as mentioned previously. So members, these are the measures that we have worked on. I'd like to recommend that um, we move this measure uh, for further discussions as well uh, and appreciate um, uh, our, the support for this measure. Any discussions for the Committee on Water and Land as agreed to with the Chair of the Committee of Agriculture? Chair, I just want to thank you for all the hard work you're putting into this. Yes. It is an Senator extremely Reveal. complicated uh, matter, so thank you for your hard work. Thank you, and yes, the last pages as well. Thank you so much. Um, okay, um, Senator Revere uh, for the vote as recommended on SB 2068 with amendments. And okay. the chair votes aye. Okay, members of the Water and Land Committee, um, chair's recommendation is passed with amendments, SB 2068, chair votes aye. Is Vice Chair Keith Agron available? Senator Algaran, are you still on? He's excused. Senator Misa Lucha is excused. I vote aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Okay, your measure is adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. Then this concludes the agenda on the decision making measure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, members. Then we'll proceed. Oh, yes, I guess we have to do this. Okay, the decision making agenda uh, is um, completed and we don't leave now members. Okay. I need my, do we have a separate folder? Okay, I'll proceed then. Thank you, IT. The Committee on Water and Land uh, is continuing its um, agenda items. And this is one uh, posted for 115 uh, for today, Friday, February 4th. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, members on uh, the agenda, the chair would like to recognize that 
with regards to SB 3228 on the second page uh, relating to tow-in surfing that um, this measure is being deferred definitely and at the request of the introducer. So we're deleting that, uh, that this measure has been deferred. So we'll proceed then with SB 2106 and this is relating to concessions on public property. Okay. One second. Okay, we have testimony in support and it's from the Department of Enterprises Services, City and County of Honolulu. Jerry uh, Pupilo, are you there? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Jerry Noe, uh, Vice Chair Keith Agaron, and members of the committee, um, DES, Department of Enterprise Services, um, like to offer the following comments and support. Basically, we stand on our uh, written testimony. Uh, it, it allows for us to essentially make our best choices and options for ad advertising our concession opportunities. Um, on, a, on a side note, uh, if I may indulge, um, we also ha had requested testimony for 2108. So upon its time on today's agenda, uh, just requesting that I could also have uh, a brief opportunity to uh, share our support of that bill as well. And thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Uh, in support, uh, sitting county of Honolulu, Emerald Lake. Is Emerald there? IT? No, same, same testimony in support. Okay, uh, members, it seems like those are the two uh, testifiers on SB 2106. Are any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we will proceed to SB 2108, and this is relating to concessions on public property and increases the term of the concession from 15 to 25 years and removes the requirement that certain concessions can only be awarded to nonprofit organizations. Uh, <clears throat> Testifying to for Palikaiko Beach Boys Club in opposition is Thomas Kopp there? Not present, Chair. Did you say I'm sorry, IT present? Sorry, Chair, not present. Not present. Thank you. Uh, testimony is on opposition. Okay, hearing none, uh, then we will proceed. On to SB 2107 relating to special management areas, and this exempts public facilities from review and permitting requirements applicable to special management areas by amending the definition of development. Um, testifying for Office of Planning, uh, Justine Nihipali. Aloha, good to see you. Aloha, Chair Inouye. Um, Vice Chair Keith Agron, um, the Office of Planning stands on its written testimony with comments with concerns relating to the broad definition of public um, facilities under this proposed measure. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, members, as we move along, any questions of the three um, measures that we've heard already or four? Is that all the testimony Yes. I, oh, we do have, sorry, on 2107, uh, we have an opposition from Douglas Meller, and uh, he has not sent in that he will speak. Yes, so Senator Revere. Um, there okay, me. Justine. Yes. Yes, Justine, are you available? O OPSD? Hey. There she is. Yes, I hey. also have um, Dr. C. Chow Lee, if, if he uh, is needed as well. All right, question. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, follow up your, because um, I think I'm concerned too about the, the broadness of, of this uh, exemption. It, it seems like just about anything that the city would want to build uh, along the coastlines or in the SMA area might be exempt. I mean, how do you, can you elaborate on your, on your concern? Yes, I think that's the, the vagueness of the definition and it wouldn't just be the city, it would be the state as well. Um, and so we do actually, there's another um, item on the agenda, Senate Bill 2764, 
that addresses um, additions to the list of what is considered not development um, that we would prefer to move forward um, to address some of the concerns that government agencies have presented relating to delays to their um, their typical types of work that um, are kind of vetted as not adversely going to affect the SMA. Um, and um, so they're a little bit more specific and we would prefer that measure to go forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Senator Sarah. Revere, would you want to question uh, Sabine Pauly? Um, no? Um, You're okay. I'm okay. All right. I'm answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, members. Then we'll proceed with SB 2724, and this is relating to sea level rise adaptation, uh, requires the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development to establish a pilot program to convene a working group to develop a Waikiki adaptation and resilience plan to address climate change sea level impacts in the Waikiki Special District. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Testifying DLNR, Mike Okay, Are you there? Hi, Mike. Hello. Um, good afternoon, Sheriff Committee members. Uh, Michael Kane, Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands. The department stands on our testimony in support. Um, we want this to be effective. It, it, it would be a valuable project. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo. Uh, Brian uh, Yee, the Deputy Attorney General's Office. Good afternoon, Deputy Attorney General Brian Yi. Um, Good partner, afternoon. Good afternoon. The department offers uh, technical comments regarding the establishment of the working group uh, in order to make it sure it is uh, legally created. We've offered, uh, there are different ways to do it, but we've offered one potential for you to use, and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay. Yes. Thank you for your input as well. Um, <clears throat> okay. Chair Case or anyone from the DLNR or that was sufficient with regards to Michael Kane's testimony. Okay, that was in support. Yeah, Michael, Michael okay. uh, is speaking on our behalf. Okay, Michael, you want to add? Um, I, I didn't have anything to add beyond our written testimony. Thank you. Okay, mahalo. Office of Planning, um, Shi Chao Li. Yes. Aloha. Uh, hi. Good afternoon. Yes. yes. I'm sorry, um, Senator. Um, the the we had submitted the um, names in error, but I will be testifying. Um, the Office of Planning stands on its testimony um, with comments, and okay. uh, we've identified a couple of um, recommended changes if the measure moves forward, um, as well as comments relating to. Um, the fact that the planning is typically county led and therefore um, we rely heavily on city and county's participation um, as well as some comments relating to capacity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments and recommendations. Uh, University of Hawaii, Dolan Eversol. Aloha. Yes, aloha. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I'm Dolan Eversol. I'm here on behalf of Darren Lerner with the University of Hawaii Sea Grant Program. We will stand on our written comments, but I do want to add uh, one thing to our written comments uh, orally, which is um, the obvious connection here with Waikiki developing a resilience plan. Uh, Waikiki or Hawaii, for that matter, is not alone in dealing with these issues. And just wanted to highlight the fact that there is a tremendous amount of research going on here at the university and outside the university for that matter to understand what other municipalities are doing to develop similar resilience plans. So I think we can benefit greatly from learning from other urban municipalities, especially in expanding on that and adapting that uh, for a Waikiki resilience plan. So thank you. We'll stand in support on our written testimony. Thank you. Uh, Board of Water Supply and support Kathleen Mitchell or representative. Aloha, Chair. And Aloha. Of, my, my name is Kathy Mitchell. I'm with the Board of Water Supply. And we stand on our written testimony and support and note that we express our interest in participating in the working group. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you for being online with us as well. Um, the Waikiki Beach Special Improvement District Association 
Uh, Rick Eget, aloha, long time no see. Thank you for being here. Uh, we need to unmute you. Rick, we can't hear you. IT? Chair, it seems that he's having technical difficulties. Oh, okay. Uh, Rick, we're having still problems. Okay, I'm going to uh, move on, Rick. If you uh, you're okay, we got your testimony, uh, members as well, and in support um, of of the measure. Okay, uh, let's see, budget and finance sense uh, communication with comments and another support from Dennis Purukawa. Okay, let's see. Let's proceed now then to uh, SB 2764. Am I on that one? We're correct. Okay, relating to special management areas uh, as well. And we do have Office of Planning, Office of Planning and Sustainable. Justine, are you on this one as well? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Office of Planning stands on its written testimony with comments and proposed amendments um, to ensure that the proposed language in the bill complies with the purposes of what's considered excluded from development under um, statutory provisions in uh, HRS 205-22. Thank you. Okay, uh, you, since you're on, and I don't want to belabor this uh, hearing as well, we're running out of time soon, but you did make a comment that uh, the language you will prefer um, compared to 27-24, am I correct? Uh, this is uh, in compare, uh, Senate Bill 2107. Oh, 2107. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, a DLNR? Michael, are you going to be speaking on behalf of this a measure in support? Um, yes, thank you. Um, good afternoon. DLNR stands on our testimony in support of the measure. Okay. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay, that's it for the testifying this afternoon. Let's proceed then to uh, SB 2766. This is relating to land use. Uh, and this requires the Office of Planning uh, to perform a study to refine rural district policies and make recommendations uh, as well to reclassification of lands from the Ag District to rural. Uh, Office of Planning, uh, Mary Alice, aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair and members. Um, the Office of Planning stands on its written testimony in strong support of this measure. We really believe this is the right approach to update uh, the 50-year-old soil uh, classifications and ratings. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you for your help on this measure. Um, office, uh, so Rodney Funakoshi, is um, he gonna add the same or you're also testifying in your behalf as well? Yes, I'm testifying, All right. Rodney. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Alice. Uh, Department of Ag, I see uh, Phyllis Shimabukuro Geyser or Morris, who's going to be on this one, I guess the chair. Uh, Aloha. Good Aloha. afternoon. Good chair. Chair. Thank chair, you. Vice Chair and members, uh, the department stands on its written testimony and support. And I have uh, Morris Atta and Earl Yamamoto to answer any questions. Thank you. Mahalo. Yeah. Thank you for your work as well. Uh, okay. And we do have. Uh, Department of Budget and Finance with the usual comments at, as well. Okay, uh, members, let's proceed then to, let's see, SB 2767 relating to fish aggregation devices. We do have um, DLNR, who's speaking on your behalf. Aloha Chair, Brian Nielsen, Administrator for Division of Aquatic Resources. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure and are available for questions. Uh, we also have Dr. Kim Holland on the Zoom here as well that could also help build questions. He's the principal investigator for this project uh, with DAR. Thank you. Okay, thank you as well. 
we do have a uh, um, communications from in support from Kim Holland. Is Kim Holland there? Okay. Not present you. chair. All right. Um, we do have uh, comments from uh, budget and finance uh, as well. Okay, members, let's proceed then with SB 2924. And this is relating to the fisherman's safety and prohibits purposeful harassment with the intent to prevent the taking of fish from persons who are fishing in state waters. Uh, DLNR. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony in support of this bill and are available for questions. Thank you. Okay, mahalo. Uh, Christopher Dean, clean the testifying for clean the Pacific. Okay, we'll move on to are then. You? Yes, the chair. Is Christopher? Okay, aloha. There was a little proceed. delay there. Okay, proceed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm Christopher Dean, president and founder of Clean the Pacific, and uh, I'm against this bill. Um, it it kind of frightens me a little bit because how are you going to define this harassment thing? If uh, you're snorkeling and or you're surfing or you're or like I'm on the coastlines of North Kohala cleaning up all this uh, debris and stuff like this. I could scare someone's fish away. They could get mad and they could arrest me. They could arrest anyone, a tourist or something like that, who they perceive as, you know, harassing them and scaring away their fish. It sounds like a frightening bill to me and I'm against right. it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Bianca Isaki. That or, chair. All right, uh, Inga Gibson, I think I see Inga there. Aloha. Yes. Aloha Chair, committee members, thank you. Um, in strong opposition, I appreciate that on its surface, the bill appears benign, you know, who would oppose protecting lawful fishers, but there are some serious concerns with this bill. Uh, just providing a little bit of history, this bill has resurfaced in recent years, driven by aquarium collectors who in two separate incidents attempted, fortunately unsuccessfully, to prosecute divers who um, basically were able to photograph or videotape violations. One resulted in the attack on a diver uh, by an aquarium collector in a second in, uh, incident uh, where a diver reported coral damage. So important for um, those who are attempting to be this initiative. Um, also, there are existing harassment laws that are adequate, that adequately deter uh, anyone from intentionally harassing any person, whether a fisher or a hunter or anyone else. All right. um, I did talk with uh, David Sakota from DAR and he could not provide any other examples aside from the aquarium collection cases where there were attempts um, for prosecution. Um, this is a dangerous bill in a lot of ways that essentially- oh, Thank you, protection. Inga. Th Mahalo, oh, and we Mahalo, do have testimony in here. Uh, sorry, members, we are running out of time. We got four minutes to go and we got one more item to to um, uh, at least address our testifiers today or the bill before us. Um, we do have uh, several um, members. Uh, there were 16 in opposition and six in support and two with comments. Uh, let's move on to SB 3374, and this is relating to commercial activities on the beaches. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 3377. Yes, thank you. Uh, DLNR for SB 3377. Aloha, Chair Inouye, uh, Vice Chair Agaran, and committee members. Uh, Megan Statz, Assistant Administrator for the Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. Uh, we stand on our written testimony uh, in support and offer comments. Uh, we are available for any questions. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, thank you, Megan. Also, I guess the testimony would be the same from Todd uh, Tashima. All right. Uh, HTA, uh, John B. Fries, or Representative. Aloha, Ili. Hey, aloha, Cherry Noy. Vice Chair Keith Agron, members, you've had quite a busy day. I'll keep it brief. 
Shoreline should be for the public. We support the intent of this measure and leave the details to the subject matter experts. Mahalo Nui and John Defree sends his aloha. He had a schedule conflict. Mahalo Nui. Okay. Uh, mahalo as well. Appreciate it. We do have members, two others, uh, sent in support, John Miko and Douglas Meller. Um, okay, members, we are out of time for decision making. And so all items. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, I understand we have a couple of minutes to go. So if you have no questions from any of the testifiers on any of the measures before us, um, we will, uh, my recommendation is that we continue to do our final uh, uh, work on this uh, agenda items for today and recommend I'm ready for making decisions and vote. Okay, and then we can go by items okay. if you have, uh, yeah, uh, we can go by, then you can, okay. Uh, let's proceed then with, oops, where's my full agenda? Here, do we need Senator Favela? Uh, no, he's here. Yeah, he oh, is. He is. Here. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, yeah. I can't um, see. We'll start from the beginning then. SB 2106, this is relating to the concessions on public property. Uh, the chair recommended that we would just pass these amendments, uh, just defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay, any questions? Hearing none, um, Senator Favel, uh, sorry. Senator Revere for the votes, please. Chair Gozai. Thank you, the chair's recommendation was, um, sorry, pass with amendments? On, on SB 2106. Yeah. 2106, pass with amendments, chair votes aye. Uh, Vice Chair Kidagran is excused. Senator Misa Lucha? Aye. I vote aye. Senator Favela? Aye. As you're adopted. Thank you. SB 2108, relating to the concessions on public property. Uh, chair's recommendation on this measure is to uh, pass with the amendments defecting the date and to adopt the technical and non-substantive amendments. Any discussions? Okay, hearing none uh, for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation passed with amendments on 2108, noting the excused absence of uh, Senator Keith Agron. Do any members have reservations or- Reservations. Reservations for Senator Favela? I vote aye. Senator Misa Lucha, I believe is aye. aye. So measure adopted. Thank you. Uh, SB 2107, Chair's recommendation on this, hearing the testimonies today as well. Um, Chair recommend that we defer SB 2107. Okay. Uh, SB 2724, relating to sea level adaptation. Uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass this with the amendments. Uh, will defect the date to July 1st, 2050. And just to blank the appropriations that's on page six, line nine. Any discussion on 2764? Hearing none, uh, I'm sorry, 2724. Of the four members present, are any voting with reservations or in opposition? Hearing none, all in favor, uh, adopt the chair. Thank you. Uh, SB 276, am I correct? 2764, are we moving in the right direction? Okay, yep, you're good. Okay, SB 2764, this is relating to the SMA area. Uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass with the amendment, just defecting the date to July 1st, 2050. Okay, any questions? Chair, Hearing none. Chair, could I? Sure. Could we entertain, uh, including the, uh, suggested amendments from um, planning. They were clarifying a couple of things that were construction related and, and such in their testimony. Okay, all right. Yes, and I think we heard from them as well. So the chair would like to add that with the amendments as well is to adopt the recommendations from uh, Office oh, of Planning. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. With amendments uh, on SB 2764. Okay, members, um, four members present, one excused. Anyone voting with reservations or- Reservations. Reservations for Senator Favela. 
Your measure is adopted, Chair. Okay, thank you. SB 2766 relating to land use. Uh, the recommendation on this measure is to uh, pass with the amendments, uh, just defecting the date to 2050 and blanking the appropriations on page four, line 12. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none. Um, yes, vote, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye on uh, SB 2766. Um, any members voting with reservations or in opposition? Hearing none, uh, measure adopted. Okay, thank you. SB 2767, this is the fish aggregation devices. Uh, on this measure, uh, Chair recommends that we pass with the amendments defecting the date and adopt technical and non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Any members uh, present voting with reservations or in opposition? Seeing none, I'll adopt it, Chair. Thank you. SB 2924 relating to fishermen safety. Chair recommends that we pass this and with the amendments, we were defecting the date to July 1st, 2050 and adopt technical and non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, chair votes aye. Okay. Um, pass with amendments. SB 2924. Chair votes aye. Um, any members voting with reservations or in opposition? Reservations. Reservations no vote for me. For Misa Lucha. No vote for Senator Favela. And I'm going to vote no also. I think it passed, Chair. Okay. It's uh, not adopted. Not adopted. Okay. Um, let's see, SB 2924 relating to fishermen safety is not adopted. Uh, we'll move on to SB 3377. Uh, this is relating to commercial activities on the beaches. Chair's recommendation that we uh, defect the date to July 1st, 2050. And we'd also like to adopt uh, DLNR's uh, amendments uh, that was to one, to amend the definition of preset to remove the reference to reservations and change it to the, to state that the customer needs to be present in order for the equipment to be placed on the beach. Uh, secondly, I used to insert the language to indicate that this measure only pertains to public beaches and not private lands that might be mistaken for public beaches. Um, so Chair's recommendation on SB 3377 is to pass with amendments. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye with four members uh, present and one excused. Any members voting with reservations or opposition? Hearing none, uh, measure adopted, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Revere for the assistance today. Right. And thank you, members. This, uh, I didn't realize we would complete our agenda, but we did it. Thank you. This will adjourn the Committee on Water and Land. Have a good weekend. God bless. Oh, my God.